Are you tired of watching boring old press releases? Then you've come to the right place, the right channel, the number one channel for CEO interviews and company overviews. Welcome to Rich TV Live. Subscribe to our channel and make sure to hit the like button on our videos to help with the YouTube algorithm. For more information and in-depth discussions and analysis, join our trading club at richpigsdaily.com. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications to get alerted when our next CEO interview is released so you can discover the next 10 bagger. Hi, how's everybody doing today? I'm your host, Rich, here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest, Steve Saviak, the CEO of Value Pharma. How are you doing today, Steve? Rich, I'm doing great, and it's wonderful to be back on your show. Love having you on the show. I believe that your company is extremely undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed. And let's get into one of the reasons and some of the reasons why. So you have recently reported your best quarter ever revenue-wise. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And you also provided even better guidance for the upcoming Q3 quarter results. Does that mean that the revenue growth that is expected has started for good? I believe so. Uh, I think uh, the revenue that we just reported for the second quarter, as you mentioned, was our, our best uh, revenue quarter ever. And to put that into perspective, we've been around for 18 years. So that, that goes back quite some time. But clearly, we're in a, a different uh, frame. We're a different company today. Uh, a lot of that is due to the, it's pr primarily due to this, the products that we have. We've launched uh, three new products that uh, have significant revenue potential. They address big markets. Uh, and I think this is pushing, pulling us up into being a mid-tier Canadian pharma company. And when I say a mid-tier wow. company, I mean, you know, if we put the, the Pfizer's and the, uh, and the Merck's at, at a certain level, um, we're looking to be that independent company that's in that second tier. So in the same sort of breath as the HLSs of the world and the Dexas's of the world, um, they're in different therapeutic areas than we are. We focus mostly on res well, respiratory, neurology, oncology. Um, and I would, yeah, the, set, the third quarter is going to be a very good quarter for us. Uh, we're predicting uh, or, or estimating revenue growth of over 50% from Q2. Wow. Um, and the future uh, revenue growth looks very significant. That doesn't mean there won't be little bumps and blips along the way. That's always the case when there's new product launches. Uh, there's a lot of things that affect the product launch. And part of it is things uh, or elements such as when do the provinces start paying for a drug and they don't all pay at the same time. So how quickly does, let's say, Ontario and Quebec and BC come on board? Uh, if they come on board a couple of months earlier than we expect, well, that's great. If they come on board a couple of months later, the, the point is they will come on board. So there could be a little timing issue there, but we're expecting a good third quarter and uh, we expect to beat that in the fourth also. And then for quarters, you know, the next eight quarters after that, uh, we can, that's what we're forecasting internally, much on the back of our two asthma drugs and our uh, blood thinner uh, called Redesca, which is actually our biggest drug right now in terms of sales. So it's leading the way uh, in the short term and the, the asthma drug should start really pulling uh, towards the end of this year. And uh, they've got a long uh, path ahead of them in terms of revenue growth. Uh, these two drugs should be a combined total of 100, 100 plus million uh, over the course of the next four years annually. So they're gonna be the big drivers, yeah. Yeah, that's exciting. I remember having you on the show when you were first introducing the product. So it's great to see the sales rolling in. And can you talk a little bit and can you forecast for the year 2021 an estimate overall of what the growth will look like and the revenue will look like for the end of 2021 and what we can expect that would look like going into 2022? <laughs> Well, 2021, if you remember 2020, we have an October year end, we finished the year uh, just slightly less than 8 million. We'll more than double that in 2021. Great. Uh, so that pushes us into the you know, 16, 17, 18 million. Again, a lot of it will depend on when certain, not in, on inventory. We have inventory, we have our teams. A lot of it will depend on, uh, on some of the reimbursement issues that I mentioned, but uh, 16 to 18 looks uh, very uh, doable for us. The year after is our big year. We're looking at 40 plus and uh, 
that is uh, again a lot on the back of Redesca, um, and which we believe will be a thirty million dollar drug uh, in uh, in two or three years time, and uh, also uh, on our asthma drugs, which and our asthma drugs, I, I can't overemphasize the the benefits of these drugs. I mean, the, the, the clinical benefits that were shown in extensive clinical trials by our partner Novartis uh, in, leads us to believe that they'll become the standard of care for asthma, for moderate to severe asthma patients in Canada. And asthma is a big market in Canada. Almost 4 million Canadians suffer some form of asthma. Wow. That's chronic disease. It starts at a very young age. Uh, and the market that we target for that specific moderate to severe market is almost $800 million and it's growing by about two and a half to three and a half percent per year. So it's a big market. Um, we were compared against big drugs the, in clinical trials. These big drugs, we, we were shown to be better than them clinically. So for a patient with a better control of symptoms, less uh, asthma attacks or as they call it, exacerbations. So I believe that, uh, you know, we have a these drugs will allow us to play with the big boys. These are world-class drugs. And uh, it's, it's a testament to the team at Valio that we we're able to license these drugs and put together a team. You know, we're over 80 people. We, a year ago, we were about 25. Uh, we'll probably be 100 uh, by the end of the year. So we'll have a, a, sales, a, a, a sales force on a par with the multinational companies in, in the sense of doctor coverage, coast to coast, uh, sales structure, and, and we've been you know, added to the management team uh, with the addition of our new president, Fred Pisano, in January. That was before the Novartis deal was done. Um, Fred comes to us from Serbia, Canada, where he, he which was a mid, mid-tier international company. Um, and I think uh, the team management and uh, the team in terms of commercial really sets us up well to commercial to benefit these products and to really maximize their potential. Now, let's talk a little bit about Redesca, which we talked about when you launched it. And you've touched a little bit about it, your low molecular weight heparin biosimilar. It has apparently already generated decent revenues, which you touch base on. How quickly can this product ramp up to peak sales? And how much should we forecast? You, you mentioned 30 million. Um, can you touch base a little bit more about it? So Redesca is used primarily in hospital, uh, post-surgery uh, or pre-surgery uh, to prevent blood clots in the extremities, which uh, if should they go into, uh, should they leave and go towards your lungs could be uh, quite uh, disastrous for patients. Um, so it's been around, the, 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 this technology has been around for a while in the sense of low molecular weight heparin. It's been used since the mid nineties. It's about a $200 million market in Canada. It's fairly stable. And most of that market is in the hospital. We launched uh, late April and it, it did affect a bit our second quarter, but we really we launched in the last two weeks. So it just uh, uh, touched the, the end of the second quarter. It's really fired up in the third quarter though, where we're selling nice. uh, and shipping quite a bit. We have a full sales team again across Canada, which is a distinct team from the team that will be marketing our asthma uh, therapies. Um, so we're focusing on the hospital. Um, as I mentioned, 30 million uh, in sales. We, we look at that, be, we'll hit that number in between 18 and 24 months. And a big part of that, again, is, as I mentioned earlier, is who pays for drugs and provinces typically pay for drugs or private insurance companies pay for drugs. But we announced that Ontario uh, through, their, through ODB has already agreed to, to pay for a Redesca at, at, uh, at the provincial level. Uh, and I think we'll be announcing shortly several other provinces are coming on. But we expect that by early fall, we should have coverage across Canada. And that's one of the key wow. The key sort of milestones you have to hit for a, for a drug to really start to sell well is to be uh, covered by the major problem, well, by, by all provinces, you know, we say major promises, every promise is important for us. Um, and we're, uh, so I, I would think that uh, by fiscal 23, you're, that's, that's kind of, you'll be in the, well into the 20 million range and uh, possibly up to that $30 million range. Again, we have competition. It's not like we're out there alone on this drug. So the competition is certainly trying to fight back and will fight back. But we have an extremely compelling uh, value proposition and we have a compelling supply proposition. Uh, our partner is the is one of the largest uh, producers of this type of drug in the world. And uh, so the supply chain is rock solid and uh, looking forward to uh, this growth. We have a good team behind it and we're having a lot of early successes with it. So uh, we're very encouraged. Congratulations on all your success. It's great to see. 
And you recently launched your two transformative products. You touched base on a little bit, the Enerzair Breeze Hiller and the Atectura Breeze Hiller Asthma Drugs. I understand that these two drugs will not ramp up as quickly as Redesca, but I also understand that the revenues that they will generate will be a lot higher on a yearly basis. Can you provide more color as to how these two drugs could eventually represent? Um, again, uh, every drug has its own revenue growth profile and Redesca has a, uh, being a biosimilar, which effectively means there's, there's already entrance in the market. So you're actually, you've got an established market and you're taking market share away from some of the other uh, competitors. In the case of, of Enerzera, these are new therapies. So you're in, in, a, in some ways, you're actually building a market. Now, obviously, there's a lot of asthma sufferers out there, but you're, you're actually, this is a novel drug. It's actually a combination of three drugs that are used. And this will be the, the, the flagship of our asthma uh, products. Uh, and it will have a, a slightly uh, slower ramp, at least for the first 12 months until provincial reimbursement is, uh, is complete. But after that, we expect to see it have a very, a very fast uptake. Uh, so first year revenues this year will, you know, will be interesting, but not, not, not uh, significant, probably a, a million, million plus uh, for our fiscal year end uh, October. Um, the year after we expect that number to, to drive up sub substantially. And uh, ultimately what we see is top line sales for Anders Air within five years being about a hundred million top line sales for Atectura, which is a smaller drug. It's a more conventional asthma therapy, but still with, with uh, strong benefits to be about 30, 30, 40 million. So the, the two, the two combined have that peak sales potential of 140. And I know your viewers are out there and saying, well, you know, how is it? That sounds like a lot of, of and what, how, how, does, how can Steve say that? What, what's the basis? Well, the basis was the clinical trials that were done. So Enerzair went head to head with, um, uh, one of the standards of care in, in Canada, another asthma drug that's been around for a while. That drug does $212 million or did $212 wow. million last year. And but what, we sh what we've shown or what Novartis was able to show in their clinical trials was that there was a substantial improvement in patient outcome with Enerzair. So again, we're going up against a big drug, but we're going up against a big drug where we've shown that we have uh, stronger clinical results. And these are meaningful for asthma sufferers. Going aside, uh, 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 along with that, we have a new business head unit, Howard Wiseman, who comes to us from the respiratory asthma space, very well known in the areas, launched product, been very successful. He'll be running that group. So it's key about the management of that group. Our sales team is essentially all put in place. Some of them are going through, through training. Some of them are actually in the field. But by August 1st, that entire team of roughly 50 representatives and five, uh, seven regional sales directors will be full bore on asthma. So we'll have the coverage out there. Um, so I think that, you know, the team is out there, it's people and product. And now with this financing that we've just completed, also they're having the resources to support it. So I think we have those, those, that, those three legs of the stool, so to speak, which is, you know, the product, people, and the, and the capital resources to launch this product and to support it in the market. And we have already a number of physicians that were involved with the clinical trials that that talk very highly about the drug. They talk high, they will be talking highly about it to their peers through various programs that we'll have in terms of uh, advisory boards and presentations and publications. Uh, so we're really excited. We're this is the launch that we're undertaking is a launch worthy of of a, of a big pharma company and it's being wow. run by people who've been there and, and done that before. So. Uh, we're very excited about the, the, you know, the future for these two and for Canadians. It's really bringing, you know, moving the, the needle, so to speak, in terms of asthma care. Yeah, I love what you guys are doing because this is not just a want. This is a need. People need this. People with asthma need this. So you've also created some new business units. You touched on a little bit to maximize the commercial potential of these three transformative products. Can you provide us more color on the new corporate structure? Um. Again, this a lot of that came about because of discussions that I had with uh, our new president, Fred Pisano, and we talked about the the old value and the way it was structured and how we need to uh, put in a, a more, I said, uh, I guess a bigger corporate type structure. Given not, and I don't mean that in terms of adding a lot of people just to add people, but more structure from the point of view of operating efficiently, uh, given the size of our products, big products. Uh, require people. They require people on the ground. They require support. Our medical team 
Our medical team is growing to six people, but that's what you need. You need for them to support physicians, uh, that uh, pharmacists, healthcare professionals, patients that have issues or questions about the product. So in doing so and organizing it, we, we created two business units, one which will be focused on the respiratory area and the other which will be specialty products. So Redesco will fall into the specialty basket along with um, uh, our, um, uh, our OnStrive uh, Parkinson's drug and along with uh, Yondelis, which is our oncology drug, plus several other drugs. So they've been formatted into one, which is run by um, a fellow by the name of Jean-Charles Lebed, who's a very um, experienced pharmaceutical executive. So he's run, running that specialty group and Howard uh, is running the respiratory group. And uh, so we're structured to, for growth. We're structured that we can handle more products. We're structured that we can handle significant sales teams. Managing a sales team is, is quite a um, it, it is a quite of a time consuming and very involved process. And we've got things in place now to grow. So we'll be, as I mentioned, have, we'll have gone from 25 uh, employees to over a hundred by the end of the summer. Um, and, uh, again, you know, when you look at the products that we have, uh, we're, you know, we're, we're very excited that this is a company that's going to grow to a hundred plus million dollars of sales in the next four years. And, uh, I hope your viewers, have, you know, we have, so we have the structure, we have the people, we have the products. And again, I go back to funding also. Uh, so all the ingredients are there now, it's execution. And uh, that's what I'm spending a lot of, and some of the other management team is spending a lot of time on is how do we get the execution, make sure we're executing, make sure we're able to look at our key performance indicators, that we're hitting the number of calls we want to make with physicians, that we're getting the, the right feedback and, uh, in terms of financially, um, and I think um, that's the road to success. That's the road to driving these revenues uh, north. Let's talk a little bit about the sales reps. So you touched base on your growing your sales reps. How many sales reps do you have now? And how many do you look to add as you implement your new structure moving forward? Well, we have basically two groups. As I mentioned, the respiratory group uh, will have uh, almost 50 sales reps. Right. and a full regional management team. And that, that team is pretty well complete right now. I mean, there may be a couple of, of uh, open spaces, but that's, uh, that's complete. And in fact, part of that team has started their training yesterday. The other uh, part will start in two weeks. So as I mentioned, by August 1st, we're hitting the ground with pretty well the entire team. On the specialty side, um, we have uh, 11 reps um, and they've been around since January. So we've, been, we've got some experience with them uh, for that period of time. Uh, and again, they're handling, you know, neurology, uh, oncology, and uh, and Redesca. So it's uh, so in total, we're I guess in the low 60s in terms of reps, and that's a fairly good size uh, group of people to uh, to manage. And obviously, a big change for us. So uh, where they're coming from, yeah, it's, you name it, they, they, they you know from the big companies to the mid tier companies. Uh, a lot of them are attracted by. Um, well, the downsizing obviously of the industry has led to some very good quality people being uh, available, but they're attracted by the, the opportunity with these products. It's, uh, you know, selling a product that can be differentiated, that brings additional benefits to, to the healthcare uh, community uh, providers or patients um, is, is something that uh, sales representatives uh, migrate towards or they, they relate to. Um, and, uh, I think we, we have really a compelling story with, with all our, with these, with our new launch products, uh, that resonate well with, uh, the entire healthcare system, whether it's saving money, whether it's bringing benefits, um, across, uh, to, and, and whether it's being, you know, being supportive on the medical side from information, um, we're treating this, as I mentioned, a very much in a big company kind of way. And that's what we aspire to be. We want to be that mid-tier company, that go-to company that when a US or European or Asian company has a respiratory product and they say, okay, well, we're not coming to Canada, uh, that market may be not as, uh, as, a, as not sized right for us or what have you. Um, who do we talk to? Uh, we want Valio to be number one on their list, the go-to company in respiratory, the go-to company in neurology. So, and that, that has a lot of benefits in the sense of attracting great products. Um, and has a lot of benefits for Canadians that will be able to launch and support great products that really uh, improve lives of, uh, of Canadian patients and provide healthcare practitioners with, with viable alternatives in treating their patients. You guys have just recently closed a 11.5 million bot deal financing. 
Can you provide a little bit about what those financial resources will do for your balance sheet at the moment? Certainly strengthen our balance sheet, without question. Um, it was a, I think this is a, uh, it was a financing that was needed uh, to support the growth that we have. And, you know, growth is a great, um, you know, everyone wants to grow, but what ha- growth takes capital, capital yes. to finance inventory, capital to hire people. As you can imagine, when you hire a sales team, you're hiring them, their, their financial impact in terms of revenue generation isn't immediate. It, it, there is a lag time, so you have to be able to support that lag time. And that's true of us, like it's true for the multinational pharma companies. Product launches are expensive. They do take some upfront cash requirements. Um, and we felt that we wanted to be in a strong position also to look at other product opportunities in terms of uh, licensing fees, licensing rights, things of that nature. So I think we were, you know, we're in a very good financial position right now. Um, we're not cash flow break even yet, but we expect to get there midway through next year. Uh, right. We think of the resources uh, at hand to support us until that period of time. Is there a plan as far as like a use of proceeds for the new financing? Is there anything specific or is it just there in the balance sheet so that it's available for future future business? Uh, I would think, oh, no, there's, there's definitely, uh, there's some of it that just goes to working capital. Yeah. Some of it to, um, uh, as I mean, augment our inventory. Some is going to be used to repay a uh, bridge loan that was uh, we uh, sort of a pre-financing uh, uh, loan that we took out in in uh, April, uh, which has a January um, repayment date, and um, so we will be using some of the proceeds to repay that. But I think uh, all in all, it's used you know you know in a sort of very simplistic way. It's going to be used to support the growth that we expect to see over the course of the coming quarters. Um, and along with that, you know, that's, you know, it's nice, it's capital, it's capital, it's very, it's permanent, and it does provide that stability. But what it also has done is it has opened up uh, the opportunities with, um, you know, the financial institutions such as our, our bank operating line of credit, that, that will be increasing also. Uh, and we also are, are talking to various um, agencies across Canada about supporting a Canadian company or a Quebec-based company. Uh, that's creating jobs. You know, what we're trying to do is develop a Canadian pharmaceutical company that's independent, that has uh, an expertise in certain therapeutic areas uh, that will be uh, on a, on a, at a very high level. And I think that's, that's a, you know, valuable for, you know, not just uh, doctors and physicians, it's valuable for our shareholders, but it's actually valuable for society, the Canadian society in general, to have these Canadian companies that have a strong presence, strong expertise, and uh, who knows, that might actually branch out uh, internationally in the coming years and, and give us sort of uh, something that, uh, you know, where we become an exporter as opposed to just an importer of, uh, of pharmaceutical products. So uh, I think the future uh, going out the next three to five years will be very exciting for Valio. We certainly hope that our revenue uh, quarter by quarter increases will uh, Will it will will resonate with our shareholders, and uh, I agree with you. Our internally, we believe our shares are are uh, are very conservatively valued. I was maybe not use the word low, but uh, we think that there's tremendous upside. Um, and uh, you know, we're still a very employee-owned uh, management board, and employees own still a considerable uh, amount of the company, over fifty percent or around 50% after this financing. And we participated in every round, uh, which shows us, it shows, I think it shows investors that we believe we, you know, you know, we, we believe from day one and regardless of which rounds we've done in the current round, the president's list was 1.5 million out of the 11.5 and it could have easily been double that. Uh, And that's, you know, insiders and friends of the uh, friends of insiders that really believe in what we're doing and in the potential of the company. Steve, I interview companies every day. I think we've done about 200 in the last year. And I've noticed that 25 million a year in revenue is kind of like, usually like the, the, the bare minimum for a company to go to the NASDAQ. So I just interviewed a company that is doing 25 million a year and they're $5 and they're on the NASDAQ. So when you think about your revenue now and you think about where it's going in a couple of years, if you hit that you know, 40 million plus mark, that shows me that you're grossly undervalued when you compare yourself to your peers. Also, when you compare yourself to some of the giants in the pharmaceutical business, like Pfizer, 
multi-billion dollar global conglomerate. Pfizer's huge. So when you're looking at a company like that, to, con- to create a Canadian potential pharmacy, uh, pharma company like a potential Pfizer would be huge. And you're still trading under a dollar. So for investors that are looking to get into the pharma business, pharmaceutical business, this is, in my opinion, a great time to position yourself in a company that's undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed. I believe your share structure is still extremely tight. And like you said, you've got insider ownership in a company, like you said, around 50%. So you guys have skin in the game. So keep up the great work. You guys are definitely on the right track. Love to invite you back on the show. Anytime you have any big news, any updates, love to be the guy to help tell your story because this is a story that I believe has legs and is extremely underappreciated. So we're going to do our best here at Rich TV Live to make sure that everybody knows that you're undervalued and everybody knows your name. Thank you so much for your time today, Steve Saviak, the CEO of Value of Pharma. Thank you very much, Rich. Look forward always to a it. pleasure. Always, have, always a pleasure having you on the show. And remember, guys, if you like this video, smash the like button, comment on the video, share the video everywhere, and subscribe for future updates. Remember, Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything that we talk about. In saying that, if you go to a financial advisor and you look at the fundamentals of Valio Pharma, I'm sure that your your financial advisor is going to say that this is a good company that is undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed. If you're not winning, you're not watching, we bring you the winners and we bring them to you first. Thank you so much for your time today, Steve. Thank you guys for watching. This is your boy, Rich, from Rich TV Live. Have a nice day, everybody. We'll talk to you soon.